Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here. It's finally time for aircraft as we continue through with deck spec. A walkthrough for Wargame Airland Battle on creating a deck and understanding exactly what you have to deal with when making one. So a lot of American aircraft here. There's uh, some of the Canadian ones and whatnot. Tons of them, but most of them, most of the most effective ones actually happen to belong to the Americans. Very unique ones. Of course, every nation has its own, but let's go over what the Americans have specifically. A lot of bombers, and a lot of ATGM aircraft here available. Uh, oh, look at all that stuff. Isn't that a lot? Look at that. So many to choose from, it's actually difficult, which is a, probably a good thing to have deck, uh, deck spec next to your side. Again, if you're watching and you're a pro, provide some advice down below, and uh, we'll go over exactly what fire and forget and all this other stuff means, of course, if you're confused. So let's start at the top. A-10 Thunderbolt 2. Oh, yeah. 155 points. A-10 Thunderbolt 2, Gao 8 Avenger, 30mm uh, cannon right on the front of her, and 6 electro-optical missiles. Ooh, what could that mean? Caliber and ammunition type. Of course, high explosives, fire and forget. So basically, once this uh, aircraft fires its missiles, you can uh, have it uh, immediately break off, and it will not be affected by breaking or evacing. So if you fire 6 missiles and escape, all those missiles, or the missiles that yet haven't hit, will definitely go into enemy tanks. Well, at least that's the theory, and that's the hope. With 8 accuracy, might be a little troublesome. So, we have the A-10 Thunderbolt 2 here. Again, look at the uh, look at all the values and everything. It's been recently updated. Again, this isn't really to look at the specific values of, uh, of the weapons just yet. It's mostly to go again, uh, through what does what. So, basically, the A-10 is an anti-tank aircraft, and uh, boy, is it, uh, is it a beauty. Uh, advancing uh, T-80s could be destroyed by this. Uh, the, the, I will tell you that uh, well, it tends to damage them more than destroy. But again, this is a good start. So in conjunction with uh, tanks on the ground or other ATGMs, you could stop an entire force with the A-10 Thunderbolt. We'll go through now next. We'll actually go in order. I've been going through uh, in order on most of these, and it's been pretty effective. And uh, that will kind of just kind of avoid the confusion. But keep in mind, the points just mean that it's more available, and there are more air aircraft available to you, too. As well, keep in mind, I guess I haven't noticed it for a while, hardened versus elite. Um, most units I would recommend bringing in minimum hardened. They get much more accuracy in veteran. Of course, there's more detailed uh, things that will kind of explain uh, I'll try to go over those eventually in the future, but uh, anyway, let's try to keep it bare, bare, uh, really basic for now. 20 millimeter cannons on the F, the A4F Skyhawk 2. This is what they consider a ground attack aircraft. Of course, if you're ever wondering exactly what an aircraft does or what a unit does, hover over its symbol here, and it will tell you exactly what it is. So, ground attack aircraft. You have a twin Colt MK2, a 20 millimeter ground uh, anti tank or anti-infantry or pretty much anything on the ground anti-rockets 127 millimeter times eight even though you can see there that the that would probably those missile launchers under the wings pro would probably hold more than eight but again it's just a game so this is very good for dispersing cheap units that are in a clump and or supply units and or enemy infantry so keep that in mind 600 miles 600 kilometers an hour i should say strength of 10 and of course there is a difference between armor and uh, strength as well, but uh, keep that in mind uh, when you're going in. Uh, we'll get into more details too. I'm sure a lot of you are more knowledgeable than this level of uh, ex explanation. So, uh, again, Marine Motorized Para Air Assault and Mechanized to get this group is, or this aircraft as well as armored. And for the Skyhawk 2, specifically bel belongs to the Marines. No difference in the paint jobs, but what you can tell is the, a the A4M. Costing 10 more points, just carries 16 more missiles, and was made in a different year. So you won't get this until pre-80s. This unit here was actually made in 1956. So it's one of the earliest aircraft available to the United States forces. And you can see it says SC in the back, which I'm not exactly sure what that... I'm sure it stands for. Well, it's, oh, it does say Marines on the side of it. So it is more of a Marine aircraft. No, di oh, the, I guess the logo doesn't change. But uh, anyway, let's move on to the A6 Intruder. This is a fantastic unit here, the A6 Intruder, carrying eight 227-pound bombs, kilogram bombs, I should say. Uh, very, very fast, 750, much, much faster than the 600 uh, from the A4F. But this is what you're going to want to use when you need to slip in quick. If you bring in a few of these for 60 points, if you brought in two of these for 60 points, 120 points to try to destroy an enemy command vehicle, or if you to try to buy a bomb a town, this is basically your flying mortar. It can drop everything all at once, 
It can stop infantry from moving. It could kill infantry. It could even take out some tanks if you placed everything right. Um, so you have your flying bomber here. And a bomber, again, with uh, even more bombs. You go from 8 to 12, plus it can fire 100 rounds a minute, much faster. And it has a little minor a ECM on it, which not too big of a help. But again, by the Marines, um, it can definitely do something rather than nothing so do not underestimate this unit I've seen it used effectively before has a crew of two it looks like inside there two homies sit inside so w give them a wave uh, again stabilizer is very good I don't know if that actually changes for planes oh I guess it does oh the prowler doesn't seem to have one I'm not sure exactly how that is affected there the better the stabilizer the more accurate the unit will fire on the move Oh, okay maybe that affects how accurately it drops bombs I'm not exactly sure what that means for aircraft but again there's the a6 intruder and the a6e tram a6a intruder ac6e tram great thing about the american units is once they do something right they usually make a second version that does it even better so if you don't feel like spending a lot of money you can get the basic unit or you can step it up and get something more advanced as well again keep in mind the different game modes economy conquest siege and destruction destruction you may want to spend somewhere in the mid-range conquest i'd say go all out anything it takes to take those points definitely go for it the A7E Corsair II is very similar to the uh, A6 Intruder, and uh, except for it just drops bombs. It, there, of course, are many differences to it. It has a Vulcan 20mm cannon on it and carries two napalm bombs under each wing. But really what it's for is the napalm, and it can drop bombs. So for 45 points rather than 60, you can drop some napalm on the enemy, stop and advance, lay it across the road, uh, early game, if you were to call out an A7E Corsair II, if you were to lay it across an enemy bridge or against where you think an enemy command could go, it could definitely delay the enemy for just a few seconds or maybe even a minute. Jeez, 10 seconds. Imagine 10 seconds. If that gave your troops 10 extra seconds, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10, that could give you a lot of time to get your units where they need to be. And that's very important in war game airland battle, definitely. The Aiden, Twin 30 on the uh, AV-8A Harrier. Boy, sometimes those are hard to say. This is both a combination of ground attack and air attack weapons. The 70 millimeter rockets are fire can are used to fire at the ground units. 70 millimeters there could destroy some supply trucks. Ooh, maybe even in like an enemy command or or some uh, maybe some supply trucks or or something cheap on the ground. A lot a lot of this game isn't about killing TADUs. It's about continuously striking small targets and kind of eroding uh, the the sand around the hardened rock. Which means if you push everything away from that TADU or the heavy armor on the field, you're only going to have to deal with one thing. But in conjunction with ATGMs and ATGM groups, if you attack with an ATADU with all of its support, you'll never break through. It's the crux of an enemy defense. But if you remove that defense, these are the units that you want to uh, give the enemy attrition and then eventually break through their lines. The AV-8A can engage helicopters. It can engage airplanes at only 2,800 meters, so it's basically ineffective against that. But if you need to shoot down helicopters and infantry transports, the AV-8A is for you. Enemy transports can be taken down and also the infantry they drop can be finished off and as well as light targets. If you need to step it up a little bit, the uh, the AV-8C carries uh, a few more rockets up to 38 rather than 19 and has a more accurate AIM missile, the AIM-9L versus the AIM-9J which has uh, increased accuracy on it. Of course those values are meant to change but I guarantee you that the AV-8A will always be less effective than the C which of course comes later in the line. Now, if you need to take out something big and you don't have all the points to call in a, uh, for instance, the, um, the the hog that we saw earlier, the Thunderbolt, also known as the Warthog, the AV-8B Harrier II is meant for, well, look at that. It's got two, um, what's a Maverick? Yeah, two Maverick, AGM-65E Ma Maverick missiles, and those are, look at that, accuracy of 10. It could definitely take out uh, some type of, if you see a T-64 um, BV or something that's a damage. Again, these are great for weakening or finishing off units. Always use aircraft in conjunction with other forces unless you know or you can risk losing your aircraft or giving away the fact that you can do that. Again, I would say don't, like for instance, the intruders, don't show the enemy that you have these kind of bombers until they've shown you several weaknesses and then take advantage of each of those so it's hard for them to hide. But with the 120 point AV-8B, 
if you bring it in once, the enemy will definitely try to defend against anything with ATGMs. Uh, ATGMs are very scary because they can be brought in accurately and they can do it again and again and again until they're shot down. So this could be a risky unit to bring out, but it does have an increased, uh, it actually has an even better uh, air-to-air missile than the uh, AV-8C has. It has the uh, the AIM-9M, which is capable of engaging helicopters at 1700 and 3500 for airplanes, which is slightly increased. Also has more AP power, or HE power, I should say, and higher suppression as well as higher accuracy. So this is a nice all-around. It's very, it's slow, 600 miles uh, kilometers per hour, I should say, but can definitely take out any mid-range Soviet aircraft and then go in for a nice uh, ATGM run. The Prowler. This is going to be anyone with AA. Well, this is the nightmare, the flying nightmare. The a, the EA 6B Prowler. It is similar to the Prowler from before, or rather, I should say, the Intruder. As you can see, they're very very similar aircraft, but very different. As this carries heat forward and fire. Uh, fi I'm sorry. I keep wanting to say forward firing, but fire and forget missiles. The AGM 78D Standard is a high explosive anti tank fire and forget. SEAD or SEED, it's basically a suppression of enemy air defense. That's what it stands for. Uh, anti radiation missile will lock onto enemy radar and be guided on them as long as they remain active. So, this is something that is huge in this game suppression of enemy air defenses, SEED aircraft. Yeah, this is basically, this is a moneymaker. The EA 6B can fly over an 85 point enemy. Uh, uh, buck or cub or a tunguska all of those of course are different points but any of those anti-aircraft defenses can be flown over and destroyed by the prowler it has an exception exceptional ecm electronic countermeasure the better the lesser chance to be hit you fly in a prowler twice you can not only take out the enemy's air defenses but make tons of points from it which means once the air defenses are gone you can bring in the thunderbolt but keep in mind the prowler cannot engage units like the Tunguska if they've turned their radar off. In fact, the Tunguska can still fire its infrared missiles if the radar is turned off for the main guns. Also, shoulder-firing weapons, like for instance the Igla or the Strela 3, are unaffected by this type of missile. Ineffected, unaffected, unaffected, who cares? No effect against that. Times 4, by the way, on those anti-radar missiles, and their accuracy is 8 with AP power of 20. This is a crazy unit, and if you brought in two of them, I, I don't even think you could, oh, you can actually bring in two of them trained. Uh, if you got a couple of kills with these, these can become hardened in no time, and they're very scary. Not a lot of people use that because they like to use the EF-111A, the Raven. Exceptional ECM on this as well, except it carries two forward or <laughs> firing forget ATGMs, which are basic, well, I should say AGMs, uh, guided anti radar missiles. And uh, again, these are, uh, uh, does it actually say yes, caliber and ammunition? Uh, seed, yes, the suppression of enemy air defenses. Also, you can see it's Seed EW, electronic weapon or weaponized or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but basically it stands for that it has ECM and can take out enemy ground forces with its missiles. Now, again, enemy ground forces being AA. This can't take out anything like, uh, for instance, it cannot take out a, uh, it can take out a Biryusa, but it couldn't take out a ZSU-57. Some of those are line of sight weapons. Also, these can't fire on other aircraft that have radar. It cannot fire on a, um, can't fire on a MiG, even though it has a radar that fires missiles. It's only ground-based. has to be high explosive anti-tank anti-armor chemical rounds. AP value will remain the same. So keep in mind whatever you're shooting at no matter how far you are from it. Now here's a little bit of a pro tip for the EF-111 Raven. The A, I should say. The EF-111A Raven. When you call it out onto the battlefield, if you call it out, say, let's let's think, think of the map as three sections. You have a top, a middle, and a bottom. If you call it out in the bottom of the map, it will eventually circle its way to the center of the map until it runs out of fuel. If you call it into the middle of the map, it'll stray into enemy territory before the before it pulls out. Basically, this aircraft itself, as well as the prowler, are kind of trained to work in circles that slowly advance towards the enemy lines. It somehow knows to kind of go closer and closer to enemy forces until it fires its missiles. So, if you're not exactly sure of where the enemy AA is, these weapons can definitely find them. It's got uh, 5,000 5, liters of fuel, which means it can't stay up as long as the... Uh, 
as the uh, as the prowler because the autonomy on that is 85 kilometers this is only 60 now this unit is extremely tough to kill the ECM unlike its missile does work against anti-aircraft of all sorts the ECM whether it's uh, being fired at by uh, well actually um, it can be it, it does have good stealth so it will be definitely hard to hit with anything so with good stealth and good ECM it will be hard to take down unless you get a MIG right behind this big boy with some type of uh, with, with some type of uh, cannon or machine gun or something something behind it to fire at it definitely needs to happen in order to bring down the uh, bring down the Raven Talking about bombs, if dropping, uh, if just dropping uh, 12 bombs isn't enough, and you need higher speed, that's what the Aardvark is for. The Aardvark is the uh, intruder on, well, I should say the the tram, the A6E tram on crack. It really is. Now a lot of people <laughs> use that term, but I'm going to use it here just to say that this thing can fly a thousand miles an hour, kilometers per hour, I should say, and has 3,500 range to ground for dropping its bombs and now although it's it's bad ECM and bad stealth this thing can fly in and drop its payload before the enemy even gets to fire on it. It looks very similar to the Raven doesn't it? I wonder why that is. That's because they're both designed uh, to be kind of that same aircraft. They're designed from the same aircraft but different purposes. Without the bombs of course it gains more stealth and speed. Now well, I guess there's, the speeds are the same but uh, this can definitely quickly drop bombs behind enemy lines and what it was built in 1967 so it should be available for everybody no matter what you play also it's available to the mecha mechanized para air assault mechanized armored i think i may have said mechanized what i meant to say was uh what did i say oh motorized is what i meant let's look at the aardvark the aardvark is a much different beast rather than dropping anti-infantry and light bomb light vehicle bombs it what it does drop is cluster bombs keep in mind cluster bombs cannot should have clarified that earlier cannot kill infantry they should but they don't they're anti-tank cluster bombs now of course they can panic infantry they could even kill some infantry maybe one or two guys but cluster bombs are not for taking out infantry they're for taking out anything that has wheels or tracks or hell who knows what the soviets are designing next if it hovers but if it has armor it's going to kill it so the MK-20 Rock I-2s are dropped by this. 245 kilogram bombs times 12. Again, the, the uh, range is very similar to the uh, the original Aardvark. Keep in mind the E drops things for in infantry. Think of it as infantry. And then the F uh, basically destroys anything that's on the frickin' ground. F, frickin'. So think of it that way. <laughs> that's a good way to remember it. It will be important, too, because if you see an Aardvark flying towards a T-80, not so bad as if you see a M, uh, the... Uh, 111F flying towards your T-80. So uh, keep in mind when trying to take out those units. By the way, this also has a better ECM and was built in 1971. So again, it's available to everybody. And it's uh, it's a very different unit. Only 10 more points to take out. And of course, it's a uh, ground attack aircraft. So to take out enemy tanks, that's big. Now, of course, this section will take a little longer because there's a lot more to cover in the air. So stay tuned here as we cover the F-14 Tomcat. Oh, that's right. Tom Cruise, where are you? There he is. You see him there? Man, he's looking good. So couple good things, couple bad things about the uh, F-14. This is an air superiority fighter. And what you need to understand with air superiority fighters is that they do not fight like any other units. They don't, they don't really get into the fray. They have two modes. They either get up very close behind with their Vulcan cannon and try to shoot and kill the enemy and break off, or with the AIM-54 Phoenix, the air-to-air -air missiles. As you see here, it says, air-to-air -air missiles are used by planes during air combat against other planes. Some can be used against helicopters, but they can't be used against ground targets. This one here specifically can only be used against airplanes. You cannot engage helicopters with this aircraft unless you're using the Vulcan autocannon, which in that case, you have to be extremely close. And for 145 points, and with us only being able to get access to one, or... Uh, it will have different value depending on who you choose. This is for the Marines, and in 1974, it's available to everybody. But this has to engage from an extremely long range in order to be effective. What you want to do is you want to call it out in your territory and basically lob missiles over to the enemy side with the 119, or no, the uh, the 11,900 meter range, I should say. And of course, that will be adjusted. Great HE power and suppression on it, but you need to be able to hit something. Medium ECM on this high speed everything else is pretty bad if you have 
enemy ATGM uh, hel uh, aircraft moving, not, not helicopters, but if you have, for instance, a MiG or something heading towards your lines, this is what you want to use to take it down, or an Su-27. Basically, the Tomcat is just kind of meant to uh, kind of stay away from the enemy while it fires missiles and then breaks off, and if it gets into a pickle, you can use the Vulcan but I would say keep this thing back in your lines and use it as somewhat of a mobile anti-aircraft platform that's kind of only sp for specialty aircraft. Only one like it, the F-14 Tomcat. Uh, only one like it, meaning this is pretty much all NATO has for an air superiority fighter, fighter that fires Phoenix missiles. Of course, I could be wrong on that. There are some others that act as similar as air superiority fighters, but this is very specific. The Soviets get two, one better than the other, but the uh, F-14 is uh, very specific to anti-aircraft. Speaking of F-15, though, there's the Eagle, 140 points, Vulcan, Sparrow, and AIM-9L. It's also an air superiority fighter, but there's a little difference here. The uh, First of all, the F-15 is an extremely effective weapon against aircraft. Keep that in mind. This is the one that gets in, gets behind, and gets dirty. It can Basically, what it'll do is it'll fly in and engage with its AIM-7M, and that's basically a long-range air-to-air missile. Then once it gets closer, it'll fire its infrareds. That's a radar guided, by the way, so depending on what kind of uh, yeah, semi-active radar. So depending on how close you are to enemy aircraft or what kind of enemy aircraft it is, it'll engage with the Sparrow. If that doesn't kill it, it'll fire an aim, and if that doesn't kill it, it'll then finish off with its Vulcan. Usually it hits with two of those three, and that usually finishes off enemy aircraft, not to mention it carries four of those, four of each missile, and then 940 rounds of Vulcan, so there's nothing that's going to get by this. Uh, ECM is medium as well, and you can look at the autonomy and all the other values. Of course, those will change, so keep an eye on those as you're making your decks. But uh, range to ground. It can also fire on ground targets, but no, 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 no. Only engage enemy aircraft with this. If you call out these two of them, that's uh, 280 points, but that is points well spent. The Eagle is very effective and uh, can engage, cannot engage ground targets, though. But if you wanted to do that... If, for instance, if you're saying, Raptor, I'm looking for a vehicle, I'm looking for some, something that can both shoot at aircraft and ground targets, well, there you go. There's the F-16A Fighting Falcon. This bad boy here does kind of what the Eagle does, except it engages first with its AIM-9, then can finish off with Falcon. And if you engage some enemy tanks or something, or you uh, have uh, you need a bombing run, or let, uh, let's say the situation calls for, I have an enemy... I have an enemy uh, MI-9 that's looking at my lines. So you fly in and bomb the, uh, you, you shoot your missiles and finish it off with the Vulcan. Now the enemy's blinded. And while you're, uh, while you're making your next pass, you suddenly see an enemy command or you see uh, some supply trucks that are clumped up. You then tell it to target the ground with the Rock I-2 AT cluster bomb and you finish off another target. So this can take out some helicopters, though it's not so good for helicopters. You could take out some slower enemy aircraft with this, drop some bombs, and then head back. It's a good day. The F-16C is very similar to that except for a couple of things. This one is 35 points more. It carries uh, three mo f uh, two more uh, cluster bombs and also has an, a crazily increase between the M9, AIM-9J and the AIM-9M. Uh, the M is has a higher uh, just everything's increased with it including range for helicopters so again you do the debate yourself also there's ecm that's a, usually another thing that they'll throw in like uh, for instance uh, um, some type of like an air freshener in your new car just a few more aircraft to go through here uh, the f4j phantom 2 is very similar to the corsair that we covered very earlier uh, i should look it up here there's the corsair uh, but there's the FJ, the F4J Phantom 2. This can drop napalm bombs and also has some infrared missiles. So if you uh, if you wanted to fly in and uh, if there were enemy, let's say the enemy dropped troops off and now they're approaching your tanks with the uh, Mi8Ts or TVs or whatever it happens to be, you can fly in and, and shoot at some enemy aircraft and then drop some napalm bombs and then get out. So very strange too, by the way, to have AIM-9Js with napalm. It's like, what, what are you trying to be here, F-4J? Are you trying to take down enemy helicopters or are you trying to engage ground forces? Keep in mind, uh, this is better for helicopters than it is airplanes though. So you that that would be the best possible scenario I could imagine for using that. And again, the, uh, F, the, um, the F-4J, S carries four more uh, napalm bombs, which means a bigger, bigger fire in the forest or in the town, and also a much more, much, much more effective uh, infrared missile. So both applications are the same, just one's a little better than the other. Now, 
if having two seed aircraft wasn't enough, then the, the F4G Wild Weasel is for you. It carries the AGM-45 Shriek or Shrieky missile, and it uh, has a 3,500 meter range to ground. It can fire four of these missiles, not to mention, unlike the, uh, unlike the Raven and the uh, Prowler, it can sure as hell defend itself against enemy aircraft. A very good ECM. It has an AIM-9L missile. Look at those ranges. Now, again, this can fly in, destroy a seed. Uh, uh, it can destroy a couple of uh, seed uh, targets, which means, like, for instance, a buck. It can blow up a buck. Then when the enemy responds with a few light East German bombers or something like that, whatever, with the, with the cannons on it, you can then try to take those down with the AIM-9L, shoot your Vulcan, and destroy another target and escape. Best case scenario, you're going to destroy a, a, a buck M1. You're going to... Uh, kill a uh, Su-27 by luck and finish it off the Vulcan. Uh, you probably would never finish off an Su-27. But if you happen to, if it suddenly got hit by uh, if it got hit by a hawk and finished off with a wild weasel, that could be a real Hail, Hail Mary for you. Now, finally, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the F-18A Hornet, a very infrequently used weapon system, but a very effective one. Very similar to when calling out, for instance, the, well, let's find it again, the, uh, where is she, the Harrier. If you're calling out the Harrier and you're just decided that oh, it's just not enough, it's too slow, it's just, it doesn't get there, it doesn't carry enough, I, I would rather spend the points and try to, well, this is for you. For, uh, for a few more points, I should say, the FA-18 Hornet carries four of those missiles and is much faster and has an ECM and also has an AIM-9L missile, so basically you can destroy air targets, finish off some T-72s. Again, these are weapons. These weapons that are capable of both targeting air, as you can see here, it's just called a multi-role combat aircraft. These multi-roles are aircraft that take a little bit more time because first they need to fire their AIM missiles, then they need to fire their their AGM missiles. Uh, that takes a few passes, and that means you have to be in the air more. So only use these advanced aircraft, these more expensive aircraft, these aircraft that need more time that are multi-role to target multiple things if you have air superiority and test that with some of your lesser aircraft. Test it out with the Skyhawk, test it out with the Intruder, test it out with the Harrier. If you call out a Harrier and suddenly you see all these uh, <laughs> these advanced fighters coming at you then there's no need to call out the, uh, the Aardvark. But again, you'll learn that through your constant testing we're always testing, and we're always taking your questions and all of your comments, so leave those down below. That is it for Dexpec, everybody. Finally, we have finished. I hope I was uh, more detailed than usual. I uh, kind of covered everything there about weapon systems. Again, you know, there are bombers that are specifically bombers, and you've got multi-role fighters. Hopefully, we've covered that multi multi-role uh, aircraft, I guess you could say, and then, of course... You know, there, there, there's some some very strange aircraft in the uh, American arsenal, arsenal that just seem to work and pull off the impossible. So if you're looking to pull off the impossible, share deck spec with a friend. Again, we went through logistics, infantry, support, tanks, recon, vehicles, helicopters, and now finally airplanes. And so that is it, everybody. So I hope we covered everything effectively. Again, the A-10 Thunderbolt 2 all the way down to the uh, F-18 Hornet. Read everything. Go through everything. See what it does if you're very confused at what it does. And also uh, watch my videos. And of course, Little Tin God also, uh, the Rat Pack is also always recording. And also, we have a new friend. That's right. Who is that? Oh, that's Ram JB, baby. That's right. The, uh, the famous War Thunder. A uh, guy has joined us and is now recording with the Rat Pack. Famous guy? No, the Spaniard. The Spaniard of the Skies, baby. Yes, right. The, sword, the Spaniard with the sword in the sky. I don't know. That's probably offensive. <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. Happy to have you part of the Rat Pack, my friend. Hopefully, I believe he was watching some of these guys as well. So, But he's a very skilled player as well because he understands and researches. So that's really what it takes to be a good player. Don't call out and spam T-55s. Again, I'm just kind of wrapping up the whole deck spec series here as the basic introduction is done. We'll get more into building a specific deck. We'll try to start first with a, a very specific American deck and take a little bit of everything and try to make a nice mixed deck for the Americans. Then we'll take a mixed deck involving everybody from NATO, and uh, then we'll move on to the Soviets and uh, give you a couple of games for that. So, until next time, friends and fans, this is Raptor reminding you to keep the password and pimp hand strong. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned a lot here. Again, if I missed anything, just cover it down below. And, of course, feel free to elaborate on things. So, until next time, password, pimp hand strong. We'll see you. Bye.